My name is Alex Williams, founder of the New Stack, and you're listening to the New Stack podcast from Cloud Native Day, brought to you by Cisco. Check out Mantle, Cisco's open source microservices infrastructure, pulling together the best of open source projects, including Docker, Kubernetes, and Ansible. Learn more at mantle.io. That's M A N T L.io. Hey, it's Alex Williams with the New Stack here at Cloud Native Day, Cloud Native Day in Toronto with Dan Cohn, who I would like to call Master of Ceremonies, Executive Director of the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. Good to see you, Dan. Yeah, thanks so much for coming out for this. Yeah. It's our first event as an organization, Uh but uh, the first of many, hopefully, to come and uh, excited to pull people together, talk about Cloud Native Computing. Now, you're new to uh, the CNCF role, but you're quite, uh, you're one of the, uh, probably one of the originals of the Linux Foundation. Yeah, I um, had my first stint from 2006 to 2010 when the Linux Foundation was a lot smaller Mm. and frankly when Linux was a lot more uh, contentious and a lot more exciting. Mm -hmm. So I was the chief operating officer there and I helped Jim Zemlin, the executive director, merge together the two predecessor organizations. And it's funny to look back on it and uh, like I was quoted on the, the front page of the New York Times above the fold for some Microsoft antitrust news and talking about the Linux Foundation response and the, the war back and forth. And here we are, this, uh, this event is on the tail end of LinuxCon, ContainerCon, which uh, amazingly has Microsoft as a platinum sponsor. And so we're really just in this brave new world where uh, Linux has won, it, it's, um, and, and, but the result of that is it's also a little bit boring. It's just sort of assumed rather than in, in past shows, in past events, you've all, you would always say, oh, look at this amazing new device that's using Linux on it, or this supercomputer, or this trading platform. And now the real news would be if something weren't using Linux. Yeah, I guess you could definitely say that the Linux, you know, Linux is now everywhere, pretty much, right? Um, but over the past two years, we've seen a new uh, movement around containers, right? We're starting with Docker, and and it's without doubt uh, there's a lot of competitive pressures right now, and it seems to be kind of like, kind of like centering around this the issues related to scale, right? Because scaling is like critical. That that seems to be like the mega theme and you can't do it by hand, right? It has to be automated in some mm-hmm. fashion. The packaging of containers allows for that. You have Kubernetes now allows for the orchestration of the containers. But there's a, I mean, it's undeniable that now we're starting to see almost a new, you know, era of, of a new kind of a, um, dynamic that will have its own tensions and conflicts and absolutely and that's what's been fun about the linux foundation is that as linux has sort of won and become established the foundation has moved up the stack and taken in a lot of new projects and when i look at cloud native computing foundation i think fundamentally what we're saying is that docker containerization has won for development there's, there's no question that this is just the, the most popular successful development technology around. Now people need to move it in production. And there's multiple options for doing that, but definitely none of them have won yet. So you have Docker Swarm is a, a very viable option. You have Apache Mesos, which is the oldest and, uh, and best known and, uh, or, or, um, or, or probably most widely deployed. Uh, there's a new one from HashiCorp called Nomad. Right. Uh, Kubernetes, originally from Google, that's now hosted uh, at CNCF, is, um, is seems like it has the most mind share, at least by the Stack Overflow charts and uh, the other the other metrics that were shown at our our conference today. And then there's also proprietary offerings. So AWS, I think, if you look at uh, EC2 Container Service, might well have more uh, market share than any of the others that we mentioned. But we certainly think that there's a, just a huge dynamic pushing people towards open source solutions rather so, than proprietary ones. So that how does that, if, you know, that, that last point in, in, in particular is pretty interesting to me. How does it affect your path and uh, the path you, uh, you forge for 
uh, all those companies out there that are trying to develop programmable infrastructure and thinking about scaling out their own operation, the only application development process and scaling out their operations. Uh, our message to enterprises and, and to vendors out there is that we, th and, and again, this comes to some degree from the history with Linux and other technologies, is we think there's just huge advantages to open source. And so uh, our message is that we don't think companies want to get locked in to a single vendor, and by choosing an open source stack, they can make that work on AWS, they can also have it work on Microsoft Azure, on DigitalOcean, on Packet, on their own private cloud, on, on GCP, or in, anywhere else. And so we're definitely trying to tell a story about a set of open source stacks that avoid lock-in. Mm -hmm. so, so when you do that, do you start thinking about reference architectures that you can recommend. So, you know, Kubernetes is core to the Cloud Native uh, Computing Foundation. You've, uh, you know, you, you are now developing Prometheus and you'll be developing other, um, you know, ASP, you'll be de de developing other technologies too. You know, there's, I think Fluent has been mentioned as one p mm -hmm. potential. What we think <clears throat> about is having a set of software stacks and so we're, we don't necessarily talk about having a single stack. Right. We think that there are multiple different cloud native architectures. The, the open source orchestrators I mentioned all represent cloud native solutions and none of them are complete solutions. All of them require a set of other projects to work with them. And so a lot of them, things like uh, PubSub that Nat provides, right. uh, Nat's provides right. as an example, or logging that right. you mentioned with uh, Fluent D, or one that our, our technical oversight committee is um, evaluating right now is a, a DNS um, project called Core DNS that's an evolution of, of Sky DNS. Mm. And so w what we're trying to say is here are different projects that we've evaluated that work well together and that we can um, illustrate and, and um, actually create demos and, and, um, and guides and such of here's how to work, uh, work with them together. But not, these are the only, not this is the only way to do it. Certainly the goal, the expectation is that vendors are then going to come look at that, those, uh, those stacks and say, oh, you know, we mainly like that, but for this part of it, we're going to yank out this project and put in this one. Or that an enterprise may look at it and say, oh, you know, I like this, but I don't like your Prometheus monitoring solution. I'm going to yank that out and put in this proprietary software or this uh, internal, internal project that we use. And uh, we're completely we find with that we think all of those approaches are are valid cloud native architectures but what we are trying to do is, is create what I would say is a set of roadmaps that get people to the destination so there's no to. one underlying uh, technology that kind of like binds it all together it's mostly just these stacks that you can yeah. use as reference guides right. and then that's where the CNCF clusters can you know that you've developed out of Las Vegas can play a role who can try those in that kind of sure aspect. I mean if there's more on their yeah. own if there's mm. one common denominator among everything it's certainly containerization mm -hmm. it is I'd say the kind of key enabler that um, has has pushed everything along the way where you start with containerization that pushes your you towards microservices because it's so easy to chop up your app and have the different parts of them and then once you've done that you kind of need an orchestrator in order to control the different piece parts but um absolutely the i, I do want to um tell folks that might not have seen our announcement this week we have this uh, amazing resource of our uh, cncf community cluster it's a thousand node uh, of Intel servers, um, about $15 million worth of hardware, and it's available for free to any open source developer that wants to test their project, their software at scale. And basically all we require is it be open source, that they be trying to advance some aspect of, of cloud native, generally that they containerize their app or microservices or orchestration, and then um, we'd like them to write a blog post within a couple months of using it oh. about the experience. But, you know, it doesn't have to be a positive blog post. It can be, hey, I containerized my app and here's all the problems I ran into. That's healthy, I like that. I like um, but that. It, and, and part of the goal here is to just say, hey, this is a resource and, and we'd like others to be able mm -hmm. to learn from it. But uh, literally they can come to our website and um, fill out, it's a pretty short GitHub issue mm -hmm. that they uh, click through and within a day or two can get access to a couple hundred um, incredibly powerful bare metal machines or, you know, containers or uh, mm -hmm. the OS they want on it. Containers are the definitely 
you know, it's very apparent that containers are the theme, right? You know, in d that, you're d that you're discussing. How do you guys think about, you know, image formats and runtimes? And I mean, it's been a, we've been talking about this all week, right? Mm -hmm. You know, with OCI and such and stuff. You know, is this a world where we're going to have multiple image formats and multiple runtimes? My answer is we don't think about it. That we have this um, you wonderful, don't think about it. We, we have this wonderful <laughs> sister organization called the Open Container Initiative, which is also part of the Linux Foundation. Okay. And uh, which has going through the, the relatively slogging work of writing Devout, up yeah. standards for both the image format and the runtime. And um, the, there's an incredible, uh, near perfect overlap of membership between the two of them. Um, and I'm very optimistic that that effort will be successful. And I'd say in a lot of ways, CNCF is reliant on them when we talk about the containerization being key to what we're doing. We, we really mean OCI slash Docker containers. But um, thankfully, that's not actually uh, our responsibility right now. But we, you can run reference architectures with multiple. Sure. You know, but, but, but people really yeah. can do whatever they but, want. But to answer your question, I, I definitely do think you're going to see standardization there. I don't think you'll see fragmentation. I think there is uh, enormous pressure in the industry that people see the value of having mm -hmm. a single Docker file that can reliably create an image and having that image be runnable. Um, in, in a ton of different environments. And mm. I think that there's so much interest from enterprises, so many interest from so many vendors that uh, you're just not going to see fragmentation occur. So in this, that's that's yeah, a prediction. Yeah, I mean, but, yeah, so you won't see that fragmentation. The, yeah, but yeah. I've been wrong before. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're not, yeah, okay. Uh, I have to. <laughs> um, so in terms of just, you know, the CNCS role, um, you know, it, Will there everything? Will, you know, are there standards efforts on at your level? Because I mean, there's an OCI kind of obvious kind of need mm -hmm. to have something written in stone, and you yeah. can make it. It can be fairly loosely defined, I think, right? Yeah. So, as the Constitution is interpreted in many different ways, so can a so can a standard, right? So, in terms of a, the, you know at the CNCF level, are there standards in? So, so the answer is CNCF is certainly open to creating standards. So, so our, as an organization, we're relatively flexible. We're not like the ITF in that we can only do RFCs mm -hmm. or only do standards. We're not like um, the Apache Software Foundation in that we can only host software projects. Right. Two areas that we're looking at that at least edge closer to the standards area are um, networking projects for um, uh, in the orchestration space. So. Uh, three of them that are, are pretty well known are uh, Flannel, um, right. Weave, and uh, Calico. Right. And all three of those implement an approach called CNI. Right. And, right. Um, the TOC has uh, our technical oversight committee that decides to incorporate projects has at least talked about uh, those three projects and CNI. They they may decide to act on that later in the year, and and they could do that. They haven't haven't yet. Another area is um, service brokers, where we've had um, a set of conversations with the Cloud Foundry Foundation, which is another project that's um, in the Linux Foundation. And they have a service broker for um, how to access third-party services, um, things like a, a MongoDB as a service, mm. how to get authentication, how to connect into it. Um, and we've talked about um, using that as which would be essentially both a software project and an API, something of a standard. Yeah. But on, on both of those cases, they're areas that we're evaluating. At the end of the day, it's our technical oversight committee that would need to adopt any standards, and or, and they haven't done that yet. It is an intricate web, isn't it? That you that you're starting to see uh, develop. I mean, at, at your level, just alone. Oh yeah, and, and um, so there's definitely <clears throat> tons of, of projects and individuals and acronyms and, and such to to keep track of. I, I mean, I, I'd say the overarching message that we're trying to communicate for CNCF and, and our goal is about building a narrative that cloud native computing is the safe, correct, modern approach for building applications. And I mean, the opposite way of that is what we don't want to have is the view of, oh, this is scary and new and different and fragmented and, oh, you should just wait a few years because uh, it, it's all uh, so so new. And so that is um, a needle that we're trying to thread. And th the reality is that there are a lot of new 
areas to this. Um, I, I'd say that there's a ton of aspects where folks are just working out the best practices. And so one of the things that we can do is to try and document that and, and on our blog have case studies, have explanations, show the journey that some of the leading companies are going through as they you know, not seamlessly, but as they deploy the stuff, show the issues they run into, how they get through it, and what their learnings were. So we only have a few minutes left. It's going to be a busy fall for you guys. Tell us a little bit about what's going to be happening. Absolutely. So um, for the foundation, we have um, a number of new members that have just joined and, and um, a lot more. My, my joke is that uh, our platinum members are uh, many of the biggest technology companies in the uh, industry and it, it, the joining lets them look at all the interesting startups out there and then uh, our silver members are all of the interesting cloud native startups and with the IPO market still closed lets them uh, interact <laughs> with um, a, a lot of their uh, perhaps eventual potential acquirers. Um, our technical oversight committee is evaluating about uh, eight or ten different projects right now and um, hopefully we'll see several of those move through the pipeline mm -hmm. and eventually become CNCF projects and we can then start promoting those, including those in demo, helping them um, improve. And um, the part that I particularly want to talk about is uh, a big event that uh, our, our biggest event of the year on November 8th and 9th in Seattle, we're going to be running a combination event of Kubicon and Cloud Native Con, and mm. also what we call Prometheus Day. Mm. And this is really an opportunity for everybody in the community to uh, come together. We're going to have just uh, a ton of fantastic tracks, seven, seven tracks simultaneously on just a variety of experts in the industry talking about uh, where things are going. And then the, you know, the hallway tracks, the hallway conversations are really just incomparable. So we um, would definitely encourage folks to, uh, to look into that. Uh, Seattle, November 8th and 9th. I'll also just uh, mention um, for folks in, uh, in Europe who have trouble making that trip to the U.S. that um, we're also going to be doing a Kubicon, Cloud Native Con in Europe in April, but we, uh, we don't have the city or date uh, locked down for that. Well, yet. lots, lots to, uh, lots to come. We'll be there in Seattle. We look forward to seeing you there and keeping in touch on the CNCF over the next few months. And thanks, Dan, for uh, having this event today. And and uh, this conversation has been very helpful for me to better understand where you guys are now, where you're going. Well, I appreciate it, Alex. I um, I believe I may be one of the last RSS um, users <laughs> left on the internet, but uh, I definitely have the new stack. Uh, RSS feed in my, I'll, I'll even give a plug for my favorite RSS readers, this little Hungarian company called Inno Reader, I-N-O Reader, but um, you I think you guys that. just uh, produce great content, oh, thank and you. Um, it's a great way for me to keep on top of the industry, but also um, other areas that I just find uh, really interesting on IoT and such, yeah. so uh, I really appreciate it. Great, well thanks so much, and uh, we, we, we really like working with you guys, so we'll talk to you again soon. Okay, thank you. Thanks. You're listening to the New Stack Podcast from Cloud Native Day, brought to you by Cisco. Check out Mantle, Cisco's open source microservices infrastructure, pulling together the best of open source projects, including Docker, Kubernetes, and Ansible. Learn more at mantle.io. That's M-A-N-T-L.io.